Hi everyone and welcome back to Curly and Yarny. My name is Milena and in today's video I am back at this old counterbalance loom so I'll be trying to put my first warp on it and spoiler alert it worked. <laughs> so watch this video to learn how I did this. Today's video is my second video working on this old counterbalanced loom. If you missed the first one, I will put a link in the description down below where you can check it out. On this first video, I talked about how I got this loom and I also give some explanations about how I put it back into one piece. Now for a disclosure, uh, I feel I need to uh, warn you that I will not this will not be an in-deep tutorial about how to uh, warp this loom. Uh, so as I mentioned in my other video, I'm still figuring things out uh, with this loom. So I'm taking you uh, with me on my learning journey. And um, so uh, I will tell you a bit more of what I do and how I do it, but I will not go into deep details. But I'm making you a promise today that uh, once I figure it out, I will be uh, making a proper warping video. But still, I'm sure that uh, by seeing what I do, you might be still able to uh, learn a lot from what I do. So when it comes to warping a loom, uh, there are many methods to do it. So one of the most common ways to warp a loom that you would see in many videos online about it would be the back to front method. However, this is not the method that I'm going to do today uh, because this uh, normally requires a rattle kit and I don't have any. Uh, so I will be doing the front to back method. Uh, so it's a little different, but uh, the upside is that I don't need uh, more material or more equipment than what I already have. I uh, don't believe it is the best way <laughs> to warp a loom, <laughs> but uh, it worked for today and it's uh, working for me right now, but uh, for sure in the future I will want to try other ways to uh, warp this loom as well. So first of all, there is something I didn't do in the last video and it is to uh, put the um, rod into uh, the uh, apron so i've just done it in the back now i'm about to uh, put it in the front so i'm using the old apron that uh, was already there and uh, when we got the loom so it is a little dirty well it looks dirty but yes, it has been very clean <laughs> with a lot of soap and vinegar to make sure to uh, so it's only stained but uh, the, 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 the fabric is clean and uh, so when i got it there was this those two roads uh, there were two rows attached together and in between this and I'm not sure why two rods would be needed. I'm sure there's a reason why but I'm not sure how to attach them and I'm not sure it will be 100% necessary. Maybe I'm wrong, probably I will hate myself later but for now I'm only gonna put one of them. And so here there's this kind of um, loop here so that uh, about one inch large and I have them all uh, the way through so I simply put the rod in them. So here we have the little bundle of warp that I'm going to uh, use today. Uh, so I did a warp of about 1.6 meters, so nothing very long, uh, just uh, to make sure uh, that I would be able to try, try do a few tests with it. At the moment, I don't have a read for this loom, uh, so I'm using the extra read that I had with my dirty loom at home. Uh, so it's a little bit too narrow, but today I will be doing a work that's only 10 inches wide, so that will be fine for this. The only thing is that this read is a 15 uh, DPI read and so it's a bit <laughs> it's gonna be a bit dense so I uh, warp uh, with some 16 two cousins that I had so now we can start the warping as you can see I have prepared the loom uh, to work uh, more comfortably uh, so in the warp I have made a cross and I have secured this cross in between my fingers and uh, so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take threads and I'm gonna slay them into the reed since I'm using a 16 to cotton that is very fine I'm going to double the threads into each tenth of the reed uh, so I'm taking two threads at a time and putting them uh, in every uh, slot or tenth if you prefer of the reed
So now I'm dancing the reed and it's time for threading. So I'm doing a simple threading. This is, after all, only a test work. Uh, so I'm doing a threading that is a 4 thread to 1. This means that I put one thread into one handle of the fourth shaft, then into a one of the third, the second, and finally I put a thread in the handle of one of the first shaft. So let me show you from a better angle. Even though uh, I have doubled the threads in the reed, I still take them one by one. So uh, in the handle, they will not be doubled. It is a very slow process. And every time that four handles are threaded, I make a little knot at the end to make sure to secure them. And it is done. Now let's look at the back of the handles. And this is a bit messy. <laughs> now I need to attach the warp to the back rod. I realized uh, that the rod was very heavy and I was having a hard time attaching the warp to it. So I decided to attach temporarily the rod to the loom and it really helped. To attach the warp to uh, the back of the loom, I like to uh, make surgeon knots. Uh, so to do so, uh, I make little bundles of normally about one inch wide. Sometimes I make my bundles a little less than that. Uh, I like the surgeon knots because that's a very strong nut and it holds very well even if it is under great tension. Now that I am done tying the threads to the back rod, I am combing them in order to reduce the mess that I had behind the handles. Then I asked my mom to come help me wind the warp to the back beam. She was turning the beam while I was holding the warp. I made sure to comb it very often and also made sure to always have an even grip on it. Hopefully the tension will be even all the way through. So welcome back. Uh, so the warping is pretty much done. <laughs> so that's a big step that's uh, done. And uh, now I want to try to adjust uh, a few things. Right off the bat, uh, I can see that uh, my rollers are not very um, straight. <laughs> they're, they're like a little hill this way. So this part is a bit higher than this part. So I will try to adjust that. Um, but other than that, it seems to work pretty well. So because it is in counterbalance loom, uh, it doesn't like unbalanced weave. This means that um, at the moment I have attached my pedal to uh, uh, each shaft and if I would only push on one pedal, so if I would only try to lift uh, one shaft or lower one shaft, it just doesn't work, it makes a terrible shed. <laughs> but if I press on two treadles, then I have the most amazing shed I have never ever ever seen in my life. So that's, ooh, that's the sound of <laughs> old age, but that's the magic of counterbalance loom. They just make the perfect sheds. So, but when I press on the treadle, we can already see how crooked uh, my shafts are. So I'll try to adjust that and then I'll try to uh, start weaving a few picks uh, to see how it goes. First, I am attaching the lower rollers to the upper roller with some extra pieces of yarn. This way, when I will be uh, readjusting the shafts, uh, if I untie some of the rollers, uh, they will not fall off <laughs> and uh, everything will uh, stay in place. So first, I started working on the right side of the loom where my rollers were much lower <laughs> than on my left side. Then I moved on to uh, the left side as well uh, in order to have uh, an equal height. Uh, I had uh, put it much higher in the other side in order to have my warp in the middle of my reed. So I had to adjust on both sides to get the desired height I wanted. So it took me a few trials and errors, but at the end, I was pretty satisfied uh, with what I got.
All right, so uh, now uh, I've started weaving on uh, the loom and there's a few things that I want to point out about my setup right now. Uh, so first of all, uh, as you might have noticed uh, during the video, on almost every clip I'm wearing a new shirt. <laughs> so it took me a lot of days in order to uh, finish the process. I was uh, doing uh, the warping of this loom uh, a lot on my spare time, so uh, half an hour here, half an hour there. And uh, the f on the final day I decided, no, enough with it, I need to get it done. Uh, so I rushed a bit the end of the process and by rushing it I made some mistakes <laughs> that I'm going to tell you uh, more about. Uh, so for now it's uh, working well so the weaving is going very well. I love the shed it's making but <laughs> I'm having uh, some problems sometimes with the pedals because I only attached uh, one pedal to one shaft uh, and in order to make a nice shed I need to press at least two pedals. <laughs> uh, so I'm a bit um, squished under the loom while I'm trying to push on uh, two at a time. So I'm going to uh, attach more pedals and do another uh, tie up underneath the loom uh, to facilitate the weaving. But now back to the mistakes I made uh, while warping. So uh, the method that I used uh, to warp it, as I mentioned, is uh, the front to back method. Uh, so I like this method because uh, I don't require much more equipment than, than what I already have. But the way I do it, uh, it's always a little bit messy behind the head all. Maybe there's other way to do it that wouldn't be that messy. Uh, so far that's the only way I have done. <laughs> so um, when it was time to tie the uh, threads on the back uh, apron, it was very messy and I really rushed it. So uh, there were two parts uh, of the thread that I did not attach to the back apron. So after uh, that we have put the warp onto uh, the back beam, I noticed that in between my headles I had a few nuts and it took me a while to realize that it was a thread that I, I had not uh, attached to uh, the back of the loom. So the thread they just made a big mess in between the headles. So it was, uh, <laughs> uh, I had to uh, carefully take them out and now I have uh, gaps in uh, my weaving. So uh, this will only be a simple, I don't think I will ever be able to make anything nice out of this warp, but it's okay because I learned so much and I learned that don't rush this. <laughs> Take your time because at the end it took me more time to undo the mess that I made than the time it would have taken me to do it properly the first time. Um, I have also adjusted, uh, adjusted all of uh, the shafts here. Uh, they seem quite even so it seems quite straight but it's not it's not perfect and i don't know how much perfect they need to be uh, so if you have the answer please tell me uh, so far i'm not having any problems but at the same time my warp is kind of narrow so uh, maybe if uh, i would have warped the whole width maybe it would i would be noticing it more if it was crooked but uh, so far there's no problem for that. Also uh, I use 16-2 cotton because first of all as I mentioned because my reed uh, is a 15 dpi head also that was it's a much denser reed and has very small uh, dent in it so I thought it would fit well and so I decided to double the threads there but 16 to cotton it's more fragile than, than 8 to cotton and I had some 16 to cotton lying around and I don't really use it because I don't really like using it with my rigid head loom uh, so I, it's kind of old cotton that I wanted just to uh, to use it to, to pass it and, and not having to uh, scratch it but I'm, I'm regretting it a little bit because I have some threads that are breaking and I repaired the first tra thread that broke and then all the other ones I just let them be uh, so it's really a messy piece so I'm a bit sh um, I'm a bit embarrassed to show you <laughs> Something I'm uh, very happy of is um, the heddles uh, seem uh, to have been changed not so long ago. So all of the frames of uh, my um, shafts, so they are very rusted. So it's a bit hard to uh, make the heddle glide, but the heddle, they seem very clean so far. <laughs> so uh, I've pushed all my warp through to attach it to the uh, back of the loom and my warp seems pretty clean. So I don't think there's any rust on them. So that's very good. Uh, so I don't, I wouldn't have to change them at least not for now. One thing I also love about this loom and I still don't fully understand it for me. It's still a bit of witchcraft. I don't get how uh, no matter uh, which treadle I push, no matter what shaft is being uh, lowered, um, I always have the nice, the, the same nice shed even though the shafts are not all attached to the same lower rollers. I always get something nice. So for me, I know it's science, I know it's physics, <laughs> but I just don't get it. And for me, it's witchcraft. Basically, it's witchcraft how it works and I'm amazed. <laughs> 
So now that everything is set up, everything seems to be working quite fine. So uh, in the next few days, I will keep on weaving and I'll probably make other discoveries and I'll probably be learning and new things every day. Uh, so this would be it for today's video. So uh, it was really more about the warping and the setting up of the loom. Uh, so hopefully uh, I will try to record my journey as I keep weaving on it. And if I make other uh, learnings or other discoveries, I'll make sure to uh, share uh, those with you on another video. So I'm uh, very glad uh, that you watched my video. Thank you very much. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And uh, also I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>